you can talk with your AI assistant about anything you see and have it pull up videos and websites. A camera and microphones give Gemini the ability to see and hear the world. Getting started and silence my notifications, please. Okay, I've sent that message to him and muted all your notifications. You put it on is the real world around you through transparent lenses. That's called optical see-through. Fora runs apps from Google Play, just like a headset. So I can make my own full-size workspace. Something extraordinary just happened in the wearable technology space that could fundamentally reshape how we think about computing interfaces. And the implications go far beyond what early prototype images suggest. Google has just officially announced its return to smart glasses with a 2026 launch for Project Aura, and the entire industry is already asking one critical question. Is this the moment Google finally beats Meta in the race for mainstream wearable computing? Something extraordinary just happened in the wearable technology space that could fundamentally reshape how we think about computing interfaces, and the implications go far beyond what early prototype images suggest. Google has just officially announced its return to smart glasses with a 2026 launch for Project Aura, and the entire industry is already asking one critical question. Is this the moment Google finally beats Meta in the race for mainstream wearable computing? And of course, within minutes of the announcement, social media did what social media always does. It turned the early prototypes into a meme factory, comparing them to everything from blind person goggles to mini VR ski masks chopped in half, to medical eyewear that doctors wear during surgery. Jokes about ads appearing on your eyeballs went viral. Some commentators said Google fundamentally misunderstood AR by placing giant YouTube windows directly in users' faces. But beyond the memes and the initial skepticism, the real story is much bigger and more strategically significant. Meta has the style with their Ray-Ban collaboration, it has the popularity with millions of units sold, and it has the momentum in terms of social acceptance and mainstream adoption. But Google has developed one feature that Meta simply cannot match with their current technology, true augmented computing. A giant virtual screen that floats in your physical world and runs real Android applications in space using Gemini's vision capabilities. This isn't about simple notifications or short text replies, or a camera designed primarily for live streams. This is a genuine computing interface sitting directly in your field of view, controlled by your hands, your voice, and your eyes working together. This one feature alone could make Google's 2026 Project Aura the first pair of smart glasses that actually replaces tasks you normally use your phone for on a daily basis. And that fundamental capability is why for the first time since 2013, Google is returning to a product category it once failed at spectacularly and attempting to win it this time. To understand why this comeback is so strategically important, we need to go back to the moment when all of this began over a decade ago. In 2013, Google Glass appeared on stage like something from another world entirely. A tiny prism display positioned above your eye, a built-in camera, hands-free photos, navigation, notifications, voice commands. It felt like a science fiction future suddenly becoming tangible reality. But while the fundamental idea was revolutionary, the timing was absolutely disastrous. People weren't ready for cameras on faces in everyday social situations. The privacy debate became completely unmanageable. The LEDs that were supposed to clearly indicate recording were too subtle for bystanders to notice. Bars and cinemas banned glass instantly. The term glass hole appeared in mainstream headlines to describe wearers. And beyond social acceptance problems, the hardware simply wasn't ready for prime time. It overheated during normal use. The battery drained quickly, often within an hour. The display was small and awkward to view, and there was no artificial intelligence sophisticated enough to give the device real intelligence that justified wearing it. By 2015, glass was dead for consumers. It was remembered not as a technological breakthrough, but as a cautionary warning about launching products before markets are ready. Fast forward a full decade and everything has fundamentally changed, not just the underlying technology, but human behavior and social acceptance. Meta proved definitively that people will wear smart glasses as long as they look normal and fashionable. Ray-Ban Meta glasses sold millions of units. Suddenly, cameras on faces didn't feel futuristic or creepy. They felt convenient and practical. 
At the same time, artificial intelligence transformed from a novelty feature into the core interface people rely on daily. Large language models like Gemini can now see the physical world, interpret images accurately, translate text in real time, understand objects, and overlay information with accuracy that didn't exist anywhere close to this level in 2013. And AR optics have matured dramatically. Waveguide displays, once dim and prohibitively expensive, can now project bright, clear imagery even outdoors in direct sunlight. In other words, the world that rejected Google Glass decisively is not the world of 2026. The market is finally ready for what Google originally envisioned. This is the moment Google has been waiting for patiently, and Project Aura is its strategic answer. The device comes in two main versions according to the announcement an audio-only AI glasses model similar to what Meta currently offers, and the advanced display model that has everyone in the industry talking. The display version is where Google believes it will definitively beat Meta in functionality. Instead of a tiny notification UI that shows basic information or a simple chat overlay for messaging, Aura gives you a 70-degree field-of-view AR display that's enormous for consumer glasses, big enough to watch a full movie comfortably, read entire documents, open three separate apps at once in different windows, or place a navigation screen floating above the actual street as you walk through a city. Meta's Ray-Ban glasses don't offer this capability. They can't. They don't have AR displays at all. They are excellent devices for capturing content and running voice assistant features, but they do not replace the phone or create a new computing surface. Google's display fundamentally does. The display technology is powered by Xreal, a company that spent years perfecting waveguide optics, specifically for lightweight AR glasses. Their projection system achieves brightness and clarity levels that earlier AR devices struggled with, especially in outdoor environments. This is precisely why Google partnered with them. Instead of building optics from scratch and potentially repeating past mistakes, Google is using one of the most mature optical engines currently on the market, ensuring Aura is not just futuristic, but actually usable in real-world conditions. The second major breakthrough solving past problems is the compute puck. Unlike the original Google Glass, which attempted to stuff all electronics into the frame itself, creating heat and weight problems, Aura moves the processor, battery antennas, and thermal management layers into a compact puck you can clip to clothing or keep in a pocket. This keeps the glasses themselves light enough to wear all day without discomfort, and completely solves the heat problems that plagued glass by moving thermal generation away from your face. It also lets Google scale performance up significantly in future models without redesigning the entire eyewear. The puck is likely running a custom snap Dragon XR chipset, optimized specifically for AI tasks and low power projection. And since the puck contains a much larger battery than what could fit in glasses frames, Aura won't die after an hour like early AR headsets did. You're looking at all day battery life comparable to smartphones. Gesture input is also a core part of Aura's interface. Google confirmed that you can pinch, zoom, drag windows, and rotate virtual screens using simple hand tracking without touching anything physical. And for the first time, Google is integrating eye tracking into glasses, not for advertising purposes, but to allow natural interaction with UI elements by simply looking at them. Your gaze becomes a selection mechanism. Then there's Android XR, the operating system that ties everything together into a cohesive platform. Google isn't launching Aura as a standalone gadget that lives in isolation. It's launching an entire XR ecosystem designed to run real Android apps in 3D space. This means messaging apps, maps, YouTube, Gmail, translation tools, work apps, and even entertainment apps can appear as floating windows anchored in your physical environment. Developers don't need to start from zero creating entirely new applications. They adapt their existing apps. Meta doesn't have this platform advantage. Apple is building its own with Vision Pro, but that device is too large and too expensive to scale down to glasses. Google already has Android running in billions of devices worldwide. Aura is the next natural extension of that universe. But the real center of Aura's capabilities is Gemini. This is the intelligence layer that makes the glasses feel like they belong in 2026 instead of 2013. When you're walking through a city, Gemini places arrows on the actual road with step-by-step -step instructions in your view. When someone speaks in another language, subtitles appear instantly overlaid on them. When you look at a product on a shelf, Gemini identifies it, reads the label, compares reviews, or gives you a summary. If you look at a restaurant menu, Gemini translates and explains ingredients. If you're cooking, Gemini can pin recipe steps above your stove. If you're working, Gemini can read documents floating in front of you while you talk. And if you simply ask, what am I looking at? Gemini knows and can explain it. 
Gemini also powers circle-to-search functionality inside your real-world view. Instead of circling something on a phone screen, you can circle the actual physical object with your fingers in mid-air. Aura understands the gesture, isolates the object, and instantly tells you what it is. Google even demonstrated a scenario where Gemini transformed an entire room into a North Pole environment instantly after the wearer said, make this room look like Christmas. That level of live visual editing and environmental transformation was not possible even two years ago. This represents the technological leap Google Glass never had. It's also the capability gap Meta is still struggling to close. Meta AI is strong for conversations and basic object descriptions, but it doesn't yet anchor content into physical space or run full-screen AR applications. That difference will matter enormously in the long run as these platforms compete. However, the launch wasn't smooth in terms of public perception. When prototype videos showed up online, the internet did what it always does. It turned Aura into a meme. People compared the prototypes to blind person goggles, ski masks, VR headsets chopped in half, and medical eyewear. It was deja vu. The same skepticism. The same social panic about privacy. But this time, Google was ready for it. The prototypes being mocked aren't the final consumer product. They're engineering units used for internal testing. The actual consumer models are being co-designed with Warby Parker and Gentle Monster, two companies that specialize in making eyewear fashionable. Aura is meant to look normal, not like a science fiction prop. This is the meta Ray-Ban strategy, but taken further because Google is building both fashionable frames and a full AR computing stack. Samsung is also deeply involved in this project. Over the last two years, Samsung has quietly acquired dozens of XR-related patents covering projection technology, gesture sensors, eye tracking, and thermal design. Their partnership with Google means Samsung will likely supply display drivers, processing modules, and manufacturing expertise for Aura. This ensures the glasses can scale globally, not just exist as a niche experiment. Privacy has been re-engineered from the ground up based on lessons learned. The camera includes a large, unmistakable recording indicator. Image queries require explicit activation. Data logs can be wiped instantly. And Google acknowledges publicly that smart glasses don't fail because of bad hardware. They fail because of bad social acceptance. Aura must feel safe to people around you, not just to the wearer. That lesson cost Google billions in 2013. They won't repeat it. Meanwhile, the market is exploding. AI glasses saw 250% growth in sales last year. Younger users are comfortable wearing technology on their faces. Travelers love hands-free translation. Commuters prefer navigation that appears on the road instead of on their phone. Students use visual AI for learning. Creators use glasses to capture videos effortlessly. And regular people just enjoy not staring at their phone every 10 seconds. Aura is not designed to replace your phone right away. It starts small. Notifications, maps, texts, translations, AI summaries, hands-free capture, and quick multitasking. But this is exactly how platform shifts begin historically. Smartwatches didn't replace phones, but they changed our habits. AirPods didn't replace speakers, but they changed how we consume audio. Glasses won't replace screens immediately, but they'll start removing dozens of tiny interactions from the phone every day and those tiny interactions add up significantly. Google wants to dominate that shift. Meta wants glasses for social media and content creation. Apple wants high-end spatial computing. Samsung is preparing XR patents for hardware dominance. Xreal wants to own projection technology. But Google wants something bigger to be the company that understands the physical world visually in real time through Gemini. Aura is the interface for that vision. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.